Right now, most of us live in a culture in which eating animals is normalized and is considered masculine. And whilst this culture is mostly self-perpetuating at this point, there are certain individuals and organizations who financially benefit from it and so actively seek to maintain and strengthen this status quo. And we're going to look at one of them today. So the organization we're looking at today is a company called The Smoke Shack, the owners of which attack veganism with a frequency that borders on the obsessive, often with content they create themselves, but they'll also share the works of others if they fit their narrative. This is the first image you see when visiting their page, a pinned post about how veganism is untenable because anti-venom is an animal product and it could save your life. So a venomous snake is basically just a desert island in disguise, isn't it? Since you could need to use an animal product to save your life one day, you may as well needlessly cause the death of countless other animals in the meantime. But before we get too embroiled in examining their ideological constructs, what is the Smoke Shack? Put simply, it's a company which sells various expensive outdoor grills. But no one's going to follow a Facebook page which is just advertising the latest model of grill. That would be incredibly boring. So the business owners have to intersperse these promotional posts with content their potential customer base will find entertaining. But more than that, they're actively promoting a cultural narrative through this entertainment. One which in itself seeks to preserve and nurture the state of mind in which someone might find themselves spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars on cooking equipment. I'm talking about the cultural narrative of the somewhat ironically bacon-worshipping men who drive big trucks, drink beer, and eat meat. So essentially, the owners of this business draw a circle around masculinity and claim that everything that falls outside of that circle isn't masculine. In other words, anyone who doesn't conform to their stereotypes isn't a real man, and coincidentally, their notion of masculinity requires that one uses the products they happen to sell. And so naturally, they also want to subvert anything that threatens this cultural narrative and threatens their business. I'm talking, of course, about veganism. And they're clearly terrified of the threat it poses. And so they've attempted to address the fundamental issue of animal sentience by putting on a blasé attitude and making posts which allude to the fact that plants feel pain too, so vegans are just as bad. Though I'm sure if pressed on it, they'd claim they don't really mean to suggest that plants feel pain, which begs the question, what do they mean by this post? The answer, of course, being that they mean to take the sting out of the implications of animal sentience for those who are unable or more likely unwilling to think it through. You see, they can never really give full answer to veganism, so instead they kind of gnaw around the edges, making vague allusions to the fact that it's somehow unworkable or inconsistent. And it seems that they're encouraging their fans, the followers of their cult of hypermasculinity, to prove their lack of compassion by engaging in a concerted display of collective denial over the horror that they're party to, as the images they post seem to deliberately mimic most people's visions of hell. It's as if the more horrifying the picture, the more they're proving to themselves and others that it must be okay, that it can't possibly be wrong, because if it were wrong, then, well, it doesn't bear thinking about. And that's the idea. But they can't fight veganism on the ethical front alone. As more and more evidence about the dangers of meat consumption come to light, they must address the issue of health, too. And since they can't claim that meat is healthy, they do the opposite. They include in their concept of masculinity a complete disregard for one's health. You're encouraged to eat meat and drink beer to excess. The idea of not caring about your own health, about your own mortality, becomes the ultimate proof of your masculinity. And a third front has opened up recently, that of environmentalism. And unlike with health, they're apparently not ready to give any ground on this one, posting persuasive materials designed to ease the minds of those who are just aware enough to appear that animal agriculture is destroying the planet, but ill-informed enough to be pacified by these comforting lies. Shh, nobody tell them that 82% of global soy production is for animal feed. And indeed, the three fronts of this war are alluded to in their motto, it's all about flavor. Presumably, forget morality, forget your health, forget the environment, it's all about flavor, was too wordy. And in exchange for giving up one's principles, ignoring one's health and selling out one's planet, besides finally achieving the state of being a man, what is your reward? What can the acolytes of this cult of hypermasculinity expect in return for their piety? In a word, acceptance. As you can see from this post, they're essentially suggesting that your friends won't invite you out to play if you're a vegetarian. Conversely, if you stay on the righteous path, if you follow their lead and buy a grill, it's promised that you'll blow their minds. Who is they? Well, they are all the friends you'll have, of course, and all you have to do is buy into their ideology, and in a more literal sense, their product line. 
Yes, do this and you'll finally arrive, finally be accepted, finally be part of the cool crowd. Selling this idea of belonging is a tactic almost as old as the advertising industry itself, and with good reason, it's a really powerful tactic. But the man behind the use of this tactic in this situation claims to have a small brain. Is that to be a point of pride now in the ideology he promulgates? Well, I suppose when you're encouraging willful ignorance in so many domains, it would almost have to be. And it does build on existing ideological constructs, as intelligence is seldom portrayed as a masculine trait in Western culture. He also says that he's got a big heart. Yeah. But uh, animal ethics aside, since it is possible that he genuinely believes his own stick that animals are not morally relevant beings, he's no doubt aware that the dietary habits he promotes are killing his customers, though slowly enough for him to make a tidy profit first, so I'm inclined to disagree on that count. And what kind of person claims to be a fool anyway? I'd suggest it's the kind who doesn't want you to figure out they're manipulating you. So whilst he may project the image of a well-meaning oaf, he is in fact a wealthy business owner who's leveraging social media to promulgate a system of ideology which will create customers for his business at the expense of their health, the lives of animals and the planet. Sounds pretty calculated to me. Thanks for watching everyone, keep looking for the truth, and when in doubt, follow that grill money.